11 of us spend nine days in god-awful weather conditions, spiking trees. 500 pounds of spikes measuring eight to 10 inches in length. You bastards go in there anyway, and a lot of people could get hurt. I mean, this is not somebody who's just a radical in college, right? This is somebody who's actively working with an eco-terrorist group. The problem for Joe Biden is that his entire administration is predicated. It sits atop the iceberg that is the Democratic Party. And that iceberg has been gradually drifting to the left. David Shore, who's a, a statistician and economist, he's of the left. He points out that basically all change in terms of policy, in terms of both parties, has come from the left since 2010. The, the right, the Republican Party, has been basically stagnant in terms of its policy prescriptions and positions since 2010. The Democratic Party has been moving ever more steadily to the left. And people of the left have begun to acknowledge this. They've begun to acknowledge, yes, we're getting more radical. Now, what they say is our radicalism is justified and good, but there is no question that Joe Biden himself has moved to the left. And this administration, which promised to be a return to some semblance of normalcy, might be more normal in terms of Joe Biden not tweeting, but it is certainly less normal in terms of policy. This was always the great disconnect with Trump, is that Trump said crazy things all the time, but Trump's actual policy was mainstream Republican policy, very often embracing centrist policy in terms of spending proposals. His foreign policy was basically normal, hawkish Republican foreign policy, although with more of a, a, a sort of isolationist bent than traditional American Republican foreign policy. His tax policy was very traditional Republican policy. His domestic regulatory policy was traditional Republican policy. Joe Biden, however, has stacked his administration with people who are radicals. His Democratic Party has decided to overthrow years, decades, actually, of bipartisan agreement on key issues. So, for example, Nancy Pelosi has announced that the Democratic Party is going to ram through a revision of the Hyde Amendment. The Hyde Amendment has been an agreement between Democrats and Republicans that regardless of where you stand on abortion, federal tax dollars should not be used for individual abortions. Federal tax dollars, if you're going to spend them at Planned Parenthood, they're supposed to be used to cover Planned Parenthood's front office. Now, we all understand that there's a little bit of a, of a legal lie going on here, that money is fungible. If you send Planned Parenthood money to cover its front office staff, then all the money they were going to use for their front office staff, they're now going to use for abortions. But at least the idea was that there was an agreement between Republicans and Democrats that abortion should not be federally funded. Democrats, however, have decided that abortion is an overt good. It is not that abortion ought to be safe, legal, and rare, as in the Clinton days, which at least allowed for the possibility of some crossover between left and right on abortion policy. Because after all, if the left acknowledges that abortion is a moral tragedy, then even if they want it to remain legal, they are not at least, quote unquote, pro-abortion. But the Democratic Party has now embraced on abortion the sort of shout your abortion idea. Be proud of your abortion. Abortion isn't merely a horrible thing that sometimes is necessary, as Democrats used to argue. Now, abortion is a point of pride. You can't actually... Usher yourself into the full flower of womanhood, another word that has no meaning, according to the Democrats, unless you have an abortion. Lena Dunham said this uh, fairly openly a few years ago when she said she wishes she had had an abortion so that she could have really enjoyed the, the full freedoms of the law. Well, Nancy Pelosi and Joe Biden, both of whom used to basically go along with the consensus view that federal taxpayer dollars should not be used for abortion. Now they've reversed themselves. Joe Biden did it a couple of years ago. He had said that he was in favor of the Hyde Amendment. Then he reversed himself because he needed to move to the left. Now Nancy Pelosi is saying the same thing. Now, one of the great, I think, annoyances for many Catholics in the country watching Joe Biden and Nancy Pelosi say this stuff is that very often they say this stuff in the name of Catholicism. And I'm going to go with the Pope and Jesus, not super huge on abortion. I don't have to be a Christianity expert to point out that, that abortion has been sort of a major issue for the Catholic Church since literally the entire Catholic Church. But here's Nancy Pelosi making the case that abortion is actually a, a positive good. Taxpayers should fund abortion. She starts off by talking about her Catholic faith, and then she's like, ah, my Catholic faith. And she just kind of throws it out the window. Here we go. As a devout Catholic and mother of five and six years, uh, I uh, feel that God blessed my husband and me with our beautiful family, five children, six years almost to the day. But that may not be what we should... It's not up to me to dictate that that's what other people should do. And it, it's an issue of, of fairness and uh, justice for poor women in, in our country. It's an issue of, of fairness and justice that poor women should be able to kill babies in the womb. Sure, my husband and I were blessed by God with these five or six kids. But if we've been, if we've been poor and if we just want to kill one of them, well... Who are we to judge? So the Democratic Party, in terms of policy, has moved in pretty radical directions here. And, and it's been true throughout the Biden administration. This is why they've embraced, quote unquote, equity as the core of all of the things they do, from NASA 
to commerce, from education to the Department of the Interior, from transportation to whatever is Joe Biden's policy prescription of the day. It's all equity. And equity, of course, is a code word for group social justice on the basis of race. Okay, this has been embraced by the entire Obama, but I say Obama, but it really is the Biden administration, which is the third part of the Obama administration. Here's it, Gina Raimondo, Biden's commerce secretary yesterday, saying that equity is at the core of her commerce strategy, which again, I don't know why. It's not the Department of Equity. In fact, the Department of Equity would be unconstitutional because equity itself as a concept violates the Equal Protection Clause of the 14th Amendment. But here is, here is Gina Raimondo claiming that equity ought to be at the center of commerce. Our number one investment priority is equity. And as our team decides which, these are, this is a competitive grant process. Uh, by the way, I think that the fact of a competition will help communities to come together as a community and, and put their best ideas forward. In order to qualify to get the money, you have to prove to us that equity, you'll have an equity lens. Okay, that's insane. So she's saying we have a competitive process, but the competitive process is not about best product, lowest price, which normally when you're negotiating on the behalf of taxpayers for grant money, that's usually the process. Now, the process is about, can you prove to us that you mirror our political priorities? Can you prove to us that you're committed to equity? And by equity, we mean you have a certain number of black people on your board and we have a certain number of gay people on your board. That's, that's how we're going to make sure that equity is assured. Right? This is very radical stuff from the federal government. And the federal government not only has no business doing this, it's pretty clearly violative of constitutional principles. First of all, it should be violative of constitutional principles to force taxpayers to pay for abortions. It should also, it's clearly violative of constitutional principles federal principles, as well as the Civil Rights Act of 1964, to suggest that the federal government can dole out money to particular businesses based on how many people of a particular melanin level are on their board. Right? That, that I, I'm unaware of a, a time in American history where the people who are stumping in favor of racial discrimination are the good guys. But this is the Biden administration. And they have at the top this man approaching senility who is able to put sort of a friendly face on this sort of stuff. But the underlying policy is really, really radical. And many of the people who are staffing the administration are really radical. It's kind of amazing the kinds of people who have been staffed in this administration. I mean, we've seen the DOJ staffed by absolute radicals. I mean, people who have written extraordinarily racially radical things, people who have been openly opposed to policing, now staffing up the Civil Rights Division of the DOJ. Now we have a nominee to lead the Bureau of Land Management, right, which is all about negotiating the needs of people like ranchers and farmers who have to use the land in order to produce and the and the federal government's vast oversight of huge quantities of land. Like people, I think, don't have any idea of how much control the, the Bureau of Land Management has over various swaths of states. They, they have oversight of 247.3 million acres, 247.3 million acres. And the amount of land they have control of in each state is utterly crazy. I mean, if you look at the map, basically it's the entirety of the state of Nevada. BLM has control, not Black Lives Matter, the Bureau of Land Management, has control over nearly all of Nevada. It has huge control over Arizona. It has big control over New Mexico. I mean, if, if you look at the map, it really is amazing. Like once you get to the west of Nebraska, pretty much half the country is under the control of the Bureau of Land Management. Huge swaths of California, huge swaths of Idaho, huge swaths of Oregon, two thirds of Wyoming, right? So the Bureau of Land Management is a pretty important position. So running the Bureau of Land Management, you don't want somebody who's, for example, an environmental radical, because if you have somebody who's an environmental radical and in charge of the Bureau of Land Management, presumably that person is going to crack down on the ability of farmers and ranchers to do what they want to do. You'll remember that it was exactly this sort of conflict that led to the standoff with the Bundy family in Nevada. You remember this. Well, now who's Joe Biden nominating to be the head of the Bureau of Land Management? It's a woman named Tracy Stone. So who the hell is Tracy Stone? It turns out that Tracy Stone went in the 1980s. She worked with essentially an eco-terrorist group. And what they used to do is spike trees. So spiking trees was something that radical environmentalists would do in areas that were about to be used for lumber. They would go in and they would nail nails. They would spike the trees. They would put spikes, metal spikes into the trees in order to break the saws and presumably injure and harm the people who are attempting to cut down the trees because the trees were more important than the people. According to the Washington Post, one spring day in 1989, Tracy Stone rented a typewriter from the University of Montana Library and began to retype a letter. 
The typewriter was to avoid using her personal computer. The letter was an anonymous warning to the U.S. Forest Service that someone had hammered hundreds of metal spikes into trees in an Idaho forest that was slated to be cut down for timber. An acquaintance in her circle of young environmentalists had asked her to send it. After fixing a few spelling mistakes and removing some profanity, Stone dropped it in the mail. It was a decision that has followed her, now Tracy Stone Manning, for more than 30 years, through her rise in Montana politics to become one of the country's most prominent environmentalists and public land experts. And now President Biden's nominee to lead the Bureau of Land Management. The letter led to law enforcement raids on student houses and a grand jury investigation. Her testimony in the subsequent trial would help send two people to federal prison. Now that Stone Manning's nomination is in the Senate, Republican opponents have seized on the... It's pouncing. It's pouncing. Okay, so the fact that you have an environmental radical, so radical that she was working with people to spike trees, possibly kill loggers. Her nomination is just another Republican seizing moment, Republican pouncing moment. Senator John Barrasso, Republican of Wyoming, who's on the Senate Energy and Natural Resources Committee, said Tracy Stone Manning collaborated with eco-terrorists. A Bureau of Land Management director during the Obama administration, Bob Abbey, also said he opposed her confirmation. Okay, again, this is an Obama administration official because of her involvement in the tree spiking incident and, quote, the fact that her initial silence put people at risk. Apparently, she did not cooperate with prosecutors in that case. However, Jeff Fairchild, who spent two months in federal prison for the tree spiking, said in a phone interview, quote, other than the mailing of the letter, Tracy knew nothing, was not involved. She was a bridge builder. She was a moderating voice in every discussion. She was always the one to say, hey, look, loggers have families too. Well, I mean, if that's the case, then why did she send a letter trying to explain to people that the trees had been spiked? By the way, here is, here is what the um, actual letter says, okay, in case you were wondering. Again, she wrote this, she, she, or at least it transcribed it, quote, to whom it may concern. This letter is being sent to notify you that the post office sale in Idaho has been spiked heavily. The reasoning for this action is that this place, of, this piece of land is very special to the earth. It is home to the elk, deer, mountain lions, birds, and especially the trees. She's like the Lorax, she speaks for the trees. The project required that 11 of us spend nine days in god-awful weather conditions spiking trees. We unloaded a total of 500 pounds of spikes measuring eight to 10 inches in length. The sales were marked so no workers would be injured and so you a-holes know that they are spiked. The majority of trees were spiked within the first 10 feet. Many, many others were spiked as high as 150 feet. I'd be more than willing to pay you a dollar for the sale, but you would have to find me first. And that could be your worst nightmare. Sincerely, George Hayduke. P.S. You bastards go in there anyway, and a lot of people could get hurt. Again, this is pretty wild stuff. And her history is, I think, pretty dispositive of the fact. I mean, this is not somebody who's just a radical in college, right? This is somebody who's actively working with an eco-terrorist group. But according to the Biden administration, this is a great nominee. And by the way, her, her, her actual vote has now emerged to the full Senate on a 10-10 vote, on a party line vote in this particular committee. The notion that the Biden administration is going to be elevating to high position as the head of the Bureau of Land Management, there are all these government agencies that honestly have so much unbelievable power that you've never heard of. Like how many people, particularly in big cities, have ever heard of the Bureau of Land Management? Not many. But if you are a rancher, if you're a logger, if you're a farmer, if you're anybody who has to do anything with the land anywhere west of Nebraska, then not only have you heard of the Bureau of Land Management, they basically can wreck your life. And the person that the Biden administration wants to elevate to this position of unbelievable power is a person who used to spike trees on behalf of radical environmentalists, or at least defend those who are spiking trees. The atmosphere was so tense at the 1993 trial of these eco-terrorists in the conservative city of Spokane, Washington, where Stone Manning testified, defendants were given bulletproof vests to get to the courthouse. Stone Manning has long offered a simple defense for her decision to mail the anonymous letter on the sabotage in the Clearwater National Forest about two hours from campus. Because I wanted people to know the trees were spiked, she testified. I didn't want anybody getting hurt as a result of trees being spiked. The four-paragraph letter she mailed put it a lot more, brunt, a lot more bluntly. Jake Krelick met Stone Manning in Washington in 1988, according to the Washington Post, before she moved to Missoula, when they were both interns at the National Wildlife Federation. A child of the Beltway who grew up in Silver Spring, Stone Manning had majored in radio, film, and TV as an undergrad at University of Maryland. But she was passionate about environmental issues, Krelick recalled. And once she enrolled in the University of Montana's Environmental Studies program, she became active alongside him in a local branch of Earth First. The group had a reputation for extreme frontline environmental activism in opposition to logging, dam building, and other development that threatened wilderness habitat. Tactics included civil disobedience and vandalism. Activists chained themselves to heavy machinery, laid down before bulldozers, and cut power lines. Their slogan, no compromise in defense of Mother Earth. Mother Earth. 
Krelik's Earth First debut occurred in the winter of 1985 when he and others barged into the office of Yellowstone National Park Superintendent Bob Barbie carrying buffalo dung and a Don't Tread on Me flag to protest the expansion of a campground and RV park into grizzly bear habitat. He would get arrested several more times. Recalled Krelik, quote, Stone Manning was a spokesperson and someone who was obviously very articulate and knew how to work with the media. Certainly, she was philosophically aligned with what our goals were, which was to protect the last wilderness areas in the northern Rockies. Okay, so Senator John Barrasso went after Tracy Stone Manning in his in, in her questioning the other day. And of course, he is exactly right. Tracy Stone Manning collaborated with eco-terrorists. She lied to this committee. And she continues to harbor extremist views most Americans find reprehensible. She is thoroughly disqualified from holding the important position of director of the Bureau of Land Management. In 1989, while a grad student in Montana, Tracy Stone Manning collaborated with eco-terrorists who had hammered hundreds of metal spikes into trees in a national forest. By the way, she did lie to the Senate, according to John Barrasso. Ms. Stone Manning claimed she had, quote, never been arrested or charged, and to my knowledge, the target of such an investigation? That's not true. According to court documents and news reports, Stone Manning was investigated in a 1989 federal probe of the tree spiking conspiracy. She was subpoenaed to provide physical evidence, including hair samples. She admitted in 1990 she was an investigative target. Her experience, she said, was, quote, degrading. It changed my awareness of the power of government. Yes, this was happening to me and not someone in Panama. Stone Manning also claimed she later testified in a trial that resulted in the conviction of a responsible individual. That's part of the story, but the reality is she did not cooperate with investigators. A retired federal law enforcement agent who was the lead investigator for the crime wrote to the Senate saying she helped plan the spiking and was a target of the investigation and refused to do anything to help. Her intransigence set the probe back by years. Only after she was caught and offered immunity did she agree to testify against one of the spikers in 1993. And this is who Joe Biden believes would be an excellent pick to lead up the Bureau of Land Management. Because again, it's a radical administration. The battle for the culture is heating up. We here at The Daily Wire are making some big moves. So be sure to like, subscribe, ring that bell, because you're not going to want to miss a single moment.